Yes, so the Land Rover Sites uh, project, I'm sure quite a lot of people have heard about this before. I apologise if there's some bits of this presentation you've seen, but I think I'll go through a recap of what it is, where it is, and the general site setup, and then I'll push on into the actual water quality uh, results that we came up with over the monitoring period, and my thoughts about how relevant they are, what the strengths and weaknesses of those results were, and I think also a bit that uh, we need more results in this area. So, quick introduction and recap to what the uh, project was. So, built in 05 06 um, with European money, um, set up a base <coughs> site. So, they wanted to put in a wide range of studs and show all the different benefits through the treatment train and so that it could be there for something that could be picked up at the end of the um, Once it's built, um, we've got some money to monitor it and that lasted from October 2008. Um, when I first got involved and went through to the end of November. And that um, was a monitoring program where we looked at everything really could say. Big focus on the uh, water quantity, um, big water quality as well. There's also in there um, a bit of power tax and we look at fast residents. So I'll go into that in a bit more detail. So Land Rove, one thing to really remember, it's a residential development. So it's quite a low traffic area and it's, there's quite a bit of green space, so it's more the green size. And the final monitoring report published in 2012, um, there are a couple of previous reports that you can go back through, but have a bit of detail in there, but I want to read a bit of detail it. So this is a sort of open map, so it's Land Rose and Chambord, Cambridgeshire, so East Anglia. Um, remembering in mind that this is somewhere where there's not massive water, but it does get um, a convective summer storm, so when it, it can rain very heavily, very quickly. Um, the uh, Land Rose site is down on the bottom right, and then we also had a control site to compare the results with, which was sort of basically the same area size, but no suds. It all went straight into a pipe and straight into the uh, set of sewer system, so we're using that as control uh, with comparison. So one hectare, so just a few more details. Um, not that big, only one hectare, 35 um, residential dwellings. Um, Subsoil is clay, and there's no filtration on this site at all. It's all the water is kept above ground through the different features, and um, that's what's really slowing it down. And it's those features that are also giving it some water quality benefit. And the yeah, low rainfall as well. <coughs> As I said before, a wide range of different size measures. We've got impermeable paving, swales, underdrain swales, which are smaller versions of swales with pipe underneath, uh, basins, they're the real thing that are providing the water quantity production, and then very small green roof, uh, and the pond at the end, which may or may not really be a pond. So this is the site. Uh, if you look at the arrows generally show flow directions, so it's all going left to right across the screen and coming back uh, to an outfall from the bottom right. So the features we had in there, every house had a water bus in there just to uh, capture a little bit. We had a very small green roof that's on a bike shed. The uh, purple paving on the uh, sort of on the actual roadways, not on the parking bits. The bits around the side need to be kept clear for the uh, service corridors. Uh, then we've got our system of swales around the uh, side which are the conveying the water. So these are the underground swales. Then we've got three basins, the two um, to the top right and one in the middle. They're pretty big ones that we which is very rare and got that much water in it because they, it would be an overdying in the sun system. So monitoring, main items on here, um, on the water quantity, we were picking that up on a quarterly basis, so that's the uh, program we had in, that's the amount of money that we were funding Ideally, I would have wanted to be able to go out there and when it rained, really go and take some <coughs> But it was limited to when we get out there within other communities. Um, had the samples were testifying in the water, so 
an element out there with a set of bottles filled them up to the plane of water for testing. We also monitored a bunch of other things, but that's not what I'm going to talk about today. These are the locations. Um, we generally on the inlets to features, so a uh, swale or basin, really, because that's where I can actually get the water. And that was one thing that we this site where there was water around, but in some circumstances, there just wasn't water to connect. It's important to remember when you're thinking about sites or water quality, actually getting out the water to test is sometimes a challenge. This is an example of where I'm really getting the water from. We had these little Vinoch weirs, which were set up to uh, primarily log flow. So I had a flow monitor uh, in there going for days off, but that's where you can actually get the water because beyond there it was spreading out through the system along the swells and basins, that sort of thing. This was the list of um, chemicals that were tested for. I wasn't involved in this, I think they just went to Anglian Water and said we want to test the water quality. <laughs> so this is what they were testing for. Um, the main ones that really um, we can actually, can actually pick up on where there's a set of hydrocarbons down the bottom and also the metals. They really start to show things that are meaningful and also the suspended solids. The ones towards the top to do with the sort of nutrients and they are those ones really didn't show as much in terms of the sun. Um, this gives a bit of text uh, description, so really the hydrocarbons and that sort of thing. But what we start to see when you look at it in detail is it progressively reducing to the side. So on some graphs, this is one that has gone around and quite a few people picked up on, which is looking at um, heavy metals. Um, I think this is all in terms of the control site. Definitely coming up the cars really. This, this show quite a decent um, production of tank. Um, really with this information. Hydrocarbons comparing the problems I would say. Very, very pronounced differences. This is hydrocarbons across the site and a bit up and down. You do get general training production left to right. The um, Things you start to notice here were that if, as the hydrocarbons can be very linked to the amount of uh, suspended sediment, you get certain inputs or areas where you're actually getting a bit more into the system, where it starts jumping up, which is really what we got them through. And number seven, although it's down on the right hand side, is actually on a sort of small tributary into the main site <coughs> system, so it's actually got less features above it to actually. Suspended solids through the site, you will say it's got to be all over the place. Uh, it really did matter what was happening on a quite a local basis with suspended solids with this sort of thing. As you're talking about around small swales, close to the second, which is our expanding on that. These swales always collect litter. Whatever you do, they are the low points in the landscape. You always get this sort of thing in around it. So you're going to get stuff there. Sometimes it's just you know, things like wood, but sometimes you get sand. So the water can be like that. As I was saying, with the spent solids, you can get this localised erosion. I think we had it exacerbated because of how we set up the inlets here because there was movement around the uh, chambers so this sort of stuff could fall into the water in front of it and the uh, massive increase in suspended solids. Just as a one. Um, and this was a picture which shows you can see there's a lot of rocks in there and the reason, well in my opinion, is that the local kids um, were feeding rocks in there <laughs> when they were born. And this just highlights what can happen when you're doing monitoring. You're leaving it there in situ and you, things are going to happen. People are going to play around with it. Well, the other um, story with this with monitoring was that some
someone managed to um, chop off one of my data logger cables with a streamer to go around. <laughs> so we lost that for about half a year as someone tried to find some money to go and replace it. But this is what you've got to go through to get that, this data over a period of time. <coughs> so, in conclusions, there's definitely evidence here which is showing that sites can improve water quality. There's certain things that I would caveat that with. You do have the situation where you've got to maintain your site's well. If you leave it and you get some localized corrosion or something like that, it's going to start affecting it. It's on a very small scale and it can be affected by very localized things. I haven't shown it here, but we did get some indicators showing very point spikes at one site, and I think they might be due to point sources. Someone in the garden might be using a certain sort of product to make rafts just in terms of fertilizer mm. that's going into the solar system right next to it, just coming through the garden. Things like that that you don't really think might happen. But, yeah. So, the metals and hydrocarbons, when you compare them to the control site, very good production, very powerful rafts. So I think <coughs> it does show, the one thing it does show is this multiple feature and the treatment train idea that we do get a problem where people don't we use one or two features. This site has got many swales in sequence. That really does work. And obviously poor maintenance can live with benefits. And there's obviously going to be unexpected. I think the last thing I would say is this is a great example. I've talked about it many times. I want someone else to talk about monitoring results. So we need some more, something to compare it to.